Hello, and welcome to Kingdom Connection with Jensen Franklin. In this weekly podcast, we hope that you have an encounter with God through inspired teaching and discover practical ways to help you live a life of purpose. If you enjoy the teaching ministry of Jensen Franklin and would like to enjoy more resources, devotionals, including our weekly updates, we hope you'll visit our website at jensenfranklin.org. I want you to look with me in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 6. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door were kicking, were keeping the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. A light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. The, one, the King James says, Get up. And his chains fell off his hands. Then, then the angel said to him, Gird yourself, tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. They went out and followed him, did not know that what was done by the angel was real. That's an astonishing thing but thought that he was seeing a vision. But when he went past the first and second uh, door or gate post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street and immediately the angel departed. Notice verse 11. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain. In other words, he wasn't certain. This was all real. He, he, he didn't even have faith to believe that what was happening was happening. He said, now I know for certain that, this has, that the Lord sent an angel and delivered me from the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the Jewish people. And I want to talk to you today about get up, get out, and get free. How to do it. How to do it. Peter was arrested by King Herod. He was put in prison and being held for execution. Herod gave specific orders, make sure this man never gets loose. He is never to break out of prison. He's going to die in prison. I'm going to execute him and silence his voice forever. He said to those over this prison, it is your job to keep this man from breaking free. We have an enemy who has decided that his job is to keep every believer from breaking free. The evening before the execution, we're told that there was an upgrade in the security. So much so that the Bible said that two chains were attached to Peter uh, on his hands. One of the chains were connected to the wall and his hands to bind his hands. We know this from history. One of the other chains, there were two chains, and one of the chains was connected around his ankles to stop his feet from going anywhere. If that wasn't enough, the upgrade in security also, according to the text, included two soldiers at all times. There were four different shifts, but two would stand, one on one side, one on the other side, making sure that if he got free from the chains, he still had two armed killer guards standing on both sides of him. And if that were not enough, he had two prison gates that he had to go through before he got to the large iron gate, massive gate, and behind that gate was a warden, the keeper of the prison, who, who was watching also. I mean, we're talking about strict, strict security. And if he could get out of one situation, he would have to go through another and another and another. In other words, it seems nothing on earth could get him out. But we're not limited, ladies and gentlemen, to earthly help. Our strength is not in horses and chariots, the Bible declares. Our strength is not in Navy SEALs shimmying down a rope and putting explosives on the iron gate and busting us out with machine guns and rocket fire and all kinds of protection. 
But the Bible says the spiritual prison that the enemy wants to hold us in, the devil thinks, I've got you this time. I've got two chains on you. I've got two guards on you. I've got two gates in front of you. And if that's not enough, an iron gate that you could never move. And if that's not enough, another war, uh, a, a, a prison guard who is over the whole, the whole prison is watching you. There is no way out. But I want to remind you that the Bible said, he that the Son sets free is free indeed. Two chains. I want to talk about those two chains for just a moment. Two chains. One on the hands, one on the feet. I believe that that speaks of the twin chains of fear and doubt. Many of you have great things ahead of you. Many of you have big things coming in your life. But the enemy would love to chain you and stop you and stop your feet from going forward. Stop your life from moving out into the unknown by two chains. The chain of fear and the chain of doubt. Fear that says you can't go where you're supposed to go. You can't do what you need to do. You don't have what it takes. The fear of someone of what someone might say, of what someone might think. You might fail. You might get laughed at. What if you don't have it? What if you're not good enough? What if you're not smart enough? The fear, the chain of fear, and, on, and, and its twin is the chain of doubt. Not just doubting if God will help you because that's what the enemy loves to do. Question and make you doubt, is God for me? Is God on my side? And if he can't get you to doubt that, one of the biggest ways the enemy will keep you bound is to make you doubt your own ability, your own giftedness, your own call, your own talent. Maybe I, you doubt if you're good enough. You doubt if you've got it. You doubt if you're talented enough or smart enough or good looking enough. All those things the enemy can put chains on us to say, you just don't have what it takes. And the chain of fear on one part of you and the chain of doubt on the other side of you, I doubt it's going to happen. I doubt I can make it. But I've come today to remind you that the Bible declares God has not given you the spirit of fear of intimidation, of timidity, of being afraid and backing up. If there's an opportunity that God wants to bring into your life, don't you dare let the chain of fear and the chain of doubt hold you back from God's very best for your life. Shake off the chain of fear. Shake off the chain of doubt. There are miracles in your future. Let God liberate you from fear and from doubt. Get your hands free. Get your voice free. Get your feet free. Shake off the twin chains of fear and doubt. And then if the enemy can't hold him with that, if somehow miraculous, I mean, he couldn't, it seemed there was no way to get out of that. But if he did, then he had two guards on either side. I believe those guards represent, one of them represents discouragement. Because you're going to encounter those guards on the journey to your dream. You're going to have to confront your fear. You're going to have to overcome your doubt. And you're going to have to break free from those chains. But as soon as you do, there will be a guard who will stand and his name is discouragement. And another guard on the other side called intimidation. And they'll do everything they can to try to talk you out of and beat you down and cause you to stay down. You see... The enemy wants to stop you and keep you and block you from being free. And he'll use discouragement and he'll use the guard of intimidation. He'll use the chain of fear. He'll use the chain of doubt, even self-doubt to hold you in the place, the dark place, the limited place that life has put you in. I want you to understand today that the enemy of your soul is guarding the gate. And he says you're not going to go further. And if somehow you could shake the chain of fear and the chain of doubt, and you could somehow overcome the intimidation and the discouragement, then the enemy would have closed doors. And he would say, those doors will never open for you. Those doors that you need to finances and so on to your dream, they'll never open for you. So you might as well just get settled right 
where you are. And I'm sure on the other side of that big gate where that warden of the prison was, he was, he was hurling insults. You don't have what it takes. You're nobody. You're nothing. You can't do nothing. You'll never amount to anything. These are the voices and the, and the, and the instruments of the enemy that he will use to hold you back from the purpose and plan and dream that God has for your life. Two chains, two soldiers, the keeper of the door, but then the story shifts suddenly. It uses the word suddenly, a light shone into the prison. That light, shining light into the darkness was the shining light of hope and victory and the word. Because it doesn't matter how bound the enemy has you in fear and doubt and intimidation and in, and, and in discouragement today, wherever you are, at whatever campus or wherever you're watching this by television or listening, streaming live, the enemy would love for you not to hear this message. He knows that if he's got you chained with fear and doubt and intimidation and discouragement, you're not going anywhere. But when the light of the gospel, that's why it's so powerful to sit in a service like this. The gospel can shine the light of hope, the light of faith, the light that can bring victory into the dark prison. And suddenly notice the chains are still there. The guards are still there. The iron gates are still there. The warden is still there. Nothing has changed except the light of the gospel is hitting. And when the light shines, the next thing that happens is the voice of an angel that says, and I'm your angel today. The voice of the angel that says, get up. Get up. That's my message. And it's simple and it's plain. When you think there's no way out, don't just sit there rattling your little chains of fear and doubt and intimidation and discouragement and talking about how big they are. Because here's the point. When I'm down here, the... the the, the guards look so big. When I'm down here, the gates look so big. When I'm down here, the discouragement looks so great. But when I decide to get up, it's amazing. They're not as big as I thought they were. They're not as great as I thought they were. That's why we can't afford to sit around in victim, be, playing the victim game and, and, and sitting around feeling sorry for ourselves. You have to get up in life and say, I am not sitting here the rest of my life. Get up. Turn to your neighbor and say, get up. And then the angel said, put your shoes on. Did you catch that? You're going somewhere. Shout, we're going somewhere. Don't sit there. You sit there wiggling your toes long enough in chains of fear and doubt with guards of intimidation and discouragement. Get your shoes on. Stand up. Get up. Get your shoes on. It's time to move. It's time to march. It's time to get out of here. It's time to put your walking shoes on. You're going where you've never gone before. And God wants you to go with confidence that his angel is going before you. I can't tell you when it happened. But all I know is the Bible said when he stood up and put his shoes on, the chains fell off. That's a miraculous thing. I wonder if he had got up the day before or the day before if the chains wouldn't have fallen off. When you're ready to get up, all you have to do is get up. 38 years a man waited by a pool for somebody to pick him up. And some of you need to quit waiting on everybody to have to pick you up to talk you into your own victory. Sometimes you have to do like David and encourage yourself and get up, put your shoes on and say, I'm moving forward. Get up and go to church. Get up and start praising God. Get up and start believing God. Quit feeling sorry for yourself and having a pity party. And get up and put your shoes on and say, I'm not going to live here in discouragement, intimidation, fear, and doubt. I'm going somewhere and here I go. Now, I don't know what happened to the soldiers. I don't understand this, but the next thing that happened is the Bible said, the angel said, put your garment on, put your coat on, 
Put your coat on. That speaks of the garment of praise. So you get up and the problems don't look so big. You, you put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You put on the shoes of faith so that you walk by faith, not by sight. And I don't know. We're not told what happened to the guards. They just disappear. I don't know if they got slain in the spirit and fell down. I don't know. We don't have an answer. All we know is the thing that was holding him back so long didn't even matter. When God said, get up, put your garment of praise on, put your shoes of faith on, and go at the sound of my voice, suddenly the guards of intimidation and discouragement could not hold him anymore. You have to get up. And I don't know what happened to those soldiers, but the thing that Peter feared the most simply disappeared. The perspective is a lot different down there than up here. And God wants us up. And you might have come in just bound and determined that you're just going to sit through another service and the chain of fear and doubt has you and you're not expecting God to do anything and then on top of that, you've been discouraged. And on top of that, you're intimidated. But the light is shining right on you in that seat where you're sitting. And I'm preaching to you saying, get up. Put the garment of praise on. Put your shoes on. Say, I'm going somewhere. I'm not staying here. The two soldiers of discouragement and intimidation didn't have anything else to say when that happened. The keeper of the prison that was so brave, trash talking behind the gate. When the chains fell off, when the guards disappeared, I like this. I love the fact that when he stood up and started walking by faith, put his shoes on, had the garment of praise on, he didn't even have to worry about the doors. He, all he had to do was push the door and keep walking. The do Listen, the doors were already unlocked. The doors to your destiny are already unlocked. God's waiting on you to get enough courage to take a step of faith. And all you're required to do, it doesn't take, you don't have to have, I don't know how that door is going to open. I'm just moving toward it. I'm praising God. I got the garment of praise on. I got up. I got my shoes of faith on. And here I go. And, and the moment he would push on the door, the door was already unlocked. And he went to another door and the door was already unlocked. And when he got to the prison gate, the big iron gate, the one that the warden was talking trash from. I could hear the warden in my mind. He was saying things like, you don't have what it takes and you're not going to make it and you're no good and you ought to just give up. But now when he sees Simon Peter coming with the garment on, shoes on, he's standing tall, walking by faith. He takes off and runs. The Bible said, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He went through the first ward, went through the second ward, and when they got there, they were unlocked all the time. He was held back by doors that were not even locked. Some of you don't understand, there will be doors that look closed, but as you walk by faith at the right time, God will make those doors open. Your job is to keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. It's not my job to push the door open. My job is to keep moving, walking by faith, having the garment of praise on, and I'm to get up and keep moving. And if you'll do that, every door that is the door to your destiny and God's plan for your life. Well, you thought they would be locked, but when you get there, the favor of God will open those doors. The favor of God will open those doors. And here's my favorite part of this little story. The whole time, what encourages me is Simon Peter didn't really believe what was going on. I thought he was some giant of faith. I thought he had such faith that he, you know, was believing and ah, that door's going to open. It was none of that. He was being carried by God's Spirit 
and he didn't even have faith and he didn't even believe that it was real. He thought he was dreaming the whole time. He thought that it was too good to be true and it wasn't until he got outside and the fresh air hit his face. It wasn't until he got outside and he was completely free that he said, now I know for real. Now that, I don't know, maybe that don't do nothing for you, but it really encourages me that he didn't have great faith, nor was he totally convinced, but God with just a little faith, not great faith, not being totally convinced, but if you will get up, if you will shake off the chain of fear, doubt, and not listen to the guard of discouragement, intimidation, and use just a little bit of faith to keep moving forward, with a little faith, chains fell off. With a little faith, guards disappeared. With a little faith, iron gates opened of their own accord. With a little faith, the, the warden started running for his life. And with a little faith, he walked out because he got up, he got out, he got free. And it wasn't great faith, it was just a little faith. I'm saying to you today that the doors are already unlocked and the iron gate is already opening. I prophesy that big doors are swinging wide open in 2017 for God's people. And don't you let the chain of fear and don't you let the chain of doubt and don't you let the guard of intimidation and don't you let the guard of discouragement tell you you don't belong here. You go and you say what I tell you to say and do what I tell you to do because I'm the God who opens doors no man can shut. If you're supposed to be there, God will get you there. If you'll get up, put the garment of praise on, put the shoes on your feet, and keep moving. Shout, keep moving. The doors are already unlocked. And I believe today is a day of freedom. Freedom from fear, freedom from doubt, freedom from bondage, addiction, sin. If you're under the sound of my voice and you'd say, Pastor Jensen, you're preaching to me. I know I'm not free. I know I'm not right with God. I know that, that I need God's power and God's grace to cleanse me and make me whole. And I want to leave this building today that I'm standing in set free by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ in His mighty name. Would you pray for me, Pastor? I want to be free today. If that's you, boldly raise your hand wherever you're standing at every campus. This is beautiful. This is powerful. Many, many hands. Raise them high and unashamed. There's no shame. See, this is putting your shoes on. This is putting your garment on. This is when the moment you do that, chains are breaking and 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 guards are are disappearing and wardens are running no more chains no more guards no more no more lies no more no more closed doors god has a big plan for my life and it's time for me to cooperate all right come on i'll let you now <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. At every campus, get out of your seat. Step out of your seat. You feel that. That's the Spirit of God. That's the light shining in your dark prison. Don't stay there. If you'll get up, the chains will fall off. If you'll get up, the guards will disappear. If you'll get up, the warden will run in terror because God is with you and His angel goes before you. Here they come. I want everybody to celebrate the harvest. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Freedom is available today from intimidation, discouragement, fear, doubt, and unbelief. Come on. Keep coming. Keep something will happen to you when you get out of that seat and walk down that aisle. Something will happen to you. Chains will fall off. Come on. Don't let fear hold you back. Sing it, church.
We're going to pray this prayer. I want everybody to say these words out loud right where you're standing. And when you do, spiritually, you're standing up. Chains are falling off. Doors are opening. Guards are fleeing. And you're going to be like it's a dream. But it's not a dream. It's real. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everybody pray this prayer out loud. Lord Jesus, I surrender completely. My life, my body, my mind, my future, I completely surrender to you. I refuse, according to your word, to be held back with the chain of fear and the chain of doubt any longer. I refuse to allow intimidation and to allow discouragement to defeat me another day. The doors that are closed, God has already unlocked. And I am taking a step of faith. And as I move forward, every door will be unlocked. And thank you, God, that the iron gate, the big door, is swinging wide open for my life. And I am free in Jesus Christ right now. Give Him the greatest shout of praise you can. Thank Him for victory over fear. Thanks for listening to this edition of Kingdom Connection. We hope this has been a blessing in your life and will share this and other great resources with your friends. Visit JensenFranklin.org for new teachings and free podcasts, videos, and blogs. And be sure to connect with us via Twitter at Jensen or Facebook at Jensen Franklin. Thanks for listening to the Kingdom Connection Podcast and have a great week. Que a la gente no me acuerde en salud Y se va a emdir en el aire y el chico Se va a la gente en el aire y el chico Se va a la gente en el aire y el chico Se va a la gente en el aire Yes.
say đủ mắt môi Anh như chỉ còn muốn em bên cạnh như hôm phố xa rồi Anh chỉ muốn em cạnh đây thôi Không muốn em ở bên đời Chỉ muốn em anh bên người oh, oh, oh. Người đã gỡ bữa đi xa trong cơn Sửa ta chúng con giữ nhau Chẳng để giữ lấy em khi cơn mưa về đến Và chẳng cần nhau khi anh với em cùng một đêm trôi Em ơi ta còn gì nữa đâu Một cơn mưa ngày hôm qua Ta còn lại gì nữa đâu khi em I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind Please Lord give me a sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on their face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement, the top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting for my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, give me that crown Get in my way and you'll be put down It ain't your place, all this my town If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now I'm losing it, the noose it fits I'm losing shit, a stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip And lose your gift, oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign A sign Yo! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions, each new update, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance Yo, do me a favor, don't treat me like a neighbor Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor I've got my own issues, I need a comb to get through Don't need to groan with you, just go get your wrong tissue I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign